This question has been posed many times around the Internet. Give proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. This video is my attempt to offer some evidence, even though the question itself is rather dishonest. The question is based on a false dichotomy, a straw man argument that defines atheism incorrectly. You state, there is a God. I don't believe you. Ergo, my atheism is correct. Atheism offers no information other than this. It is not convinced that gods exist based on the available evidence. The explanation for why I am an atheist is this. The existence of a deity, with the traits described by many theists, flies in the face of nature, which is all that we can readily observe. Until there is testable data to show that natural law can be suspended by the will of a being, the correct stance to hold is that no such being exists. Not having a better explanation than a god does not make theism correct by default. Simply inserting gods as an explanation when the only real answer is I don't know is delusional at best and dishonest at least. It may in fact be this fear of the unknown that drives theists to believe in Bronze Age myths and legends or quite similarly create their own modern deity as Scientology and others have done. Where the theist claims knowledge, atheism says, I don't know. Science says, interesting question. Let's try and find out. My disbelief is not due to a lack of evidence alone. For example, theists have often used this poorly thought out analogy to demonstrate their faith in a god. They may ask if I believe a million dollars exists. I do. Next, they ask if I have ever seen a million dollars in cash. I have not. Then they submit that if I have not seen the money, yet I believe it exists, I am believing in it based on faith. But in fact, I am not. To demonstrate that I have good evidence to believe in the million dollars, I ask this question. Have you traveled much? Around the country? Around the world, perhaps? Most people have done some traveling. Have you ever noticed during your trip that there are massive cities spread across the land with millions of cars and millions of houses and millions of people in them? Of course you have. Now how much money do you have in your pocket? I'll assume for the sake of argument that you have at least one dollar, but perhaps you have twenty, sixty, or even a hundred dollars at the moment. One dollar will suffice. Why would you assume that no one else has any money? Is it not reasonable to conclude that if there are millions of people, and if each of them has a home and a car, that most of them will have at least one dollar as well? That would mean that not just millions, but billions of dollars exist. I don't need to see it all at once in order to believe it. I have very convincing evidence for it in my own pocket. No reasonable person can refute this logic. The evidence itself makes disbelief in the million dollars all but impossible. This is where gods fall short. I have seen no evidence of any kind that persuades me to believe in Yahweh, Allah, or Zeus, and the second-hand stories I hear are all but indistinguishable from delusional anecdotes, relying heavily on incredible leaps of faith and irrational conclusions. Gods are often defined as omniscient, omnipotent beings whose very will can bend or break the laws of nature. I simply cannot accept that claim. This analogy may help explain. Let's say you have a close friend or a relative, a level-headed individual who always impresses you with a positive attitude, honesty, and fairness towards everyone. The kind of individual who inspires you to be a better person, someone you trust, not on faith, but because you have experienced on multiple occasions over many years that he is trustworthy. Many of you may know someone like this. If so, imagine that person now. Now let's say tomorrow a stranger tells you he heard your friend just beat a nine-year-old child to death for walking across his lawn while taking a shortcut to school. You are speechless, but go to investigate. There are no police around his house, there is no body in the yard, and you hear nothing of the story on the news. Would you truly believe the stranger's story? Personally, 
I would choose not to believe the stranger. Here's why. All of the information and past experience I have regarding my friend suggests that these actions are not congruent with his nature. I cannot begin to imagine that he would ever behave this way for any reason, let alone for something trivial and petty. Does it prove that he did not do it? No, it does not. But I must follow my past experience and rational thought, as that is all that I have. This exact same skeptical reaction is why I don't accept the existence of gods. The world that I know, and have known for my entire life, has never behaved in a manner that was inconsistent with my expectations, nor has it allowed for magic or miracles. Coincidences? Yes. Rare and seemingly unexplainable occurrences? Sure, they've been known to happen. But every time something seemingly unexplainable has been explained, not guessed at, but actually explained, clearly and without the need for illogical leaps of faith, it has had a natural explanation. It is in the light of such an explanation that I am left with no choice. Willingly or unwillingly, I am compelled to believe, based on the evidence. I cannot prove there are no gods, but this is not what atheism is. It is simply a lack of belief in untestable and unfalsifiable claims about mankind's existence and the origins of our universe all of which would require the suspension of well-known natural scientific laws and basic reasoning. This rational thought process relies solely on logic and available facts, but it is all I have to go on, and if you're honest with yourself, it is really all you have to go on too. Thanks for listening.